Did you know that all reds or all colors are not made equal in the art supply world? At some point I figured it out. It took me a little bit too long so today I want to show you how to buy the right acrylic paint colors for you. I used to just go to the art supply store, pick colors that I liked and that was it. Sometimes I was happy with the paint, sometimes I was very disappointed with some paint colors. I didn't know why. But on the label, there's a few bits of information that are crucial and can really help you choose the right pigment for your needs. I like using Liquitex, but this applies for many well-known brands. So by nature, some pigments are more transparent than others. So acrylic paint is made of a binder, like a polymer, which is the kind of like plasticky feel when it dries. It holds the pigment together and the pigment itself comes from different sources. So by nature, some will be semi-transparent, some will be very transparent and some will be fully opaque. So if you're like me, you might love a specific shade of blue but find out that it's kind of transparent and not opaque and you have to live with it. The pigments are divided in three categories usually, so fully opaque, which is a square, full square, semi-translucent, a half square, and transparent. To make a semi-transparent or transparent shade opaque, there's always the option of mixing it with an opaque color or with white. It'll make the color more pastel -y or a lighter shade, but it will at least make it opaque. I love opaque colors in most cases just because of the style that I use, but semi-translucent and transparent colors are not to be dismissed because they're very, very useful in many cases. Some blues, browns, and greens could be very useful to create shades and landscapes. The fact that they're transparent and when you apply a, a thin layer, you can still see the shade underneath but with a different hue on top creates a perfect shadow. Some shades of reds and yellow can do the same for portraits, let's say. So the colors that are not opaque are still very useful. It's just a question of knowing which pigment is good for what and choosing the right color for the job. That's for opacity. Another aspect to think about is toxicity. So some pigments by nature are toxic. In fact, a lot of them are. Some are worse than others. You might have heard of cadmium. Cadmium is often present in reds, yellows, and orange. In paint form though, it's not so bad. It's more when it's inhaled or ingested. So spray paints are more toxic. So you need a mask, gloves, a well-ventilated area, as well as powdery mediums like dry pastel, which the powder can go a bit everywhere and it's easy to inhale some. When it comes to paint, it's not as bad. You can wear gloves if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to. It's not a question of if paint goes onto your skin, that isn't so bad. I think it's more like if you have a bunch of paint all over your fingers and you leave it on and you have a sandwich with dirty hands, then you have the risk of ingesting some. That's where toxicity plays. If you have just a little bit of paint on your fingers, it's not that bad. But as an example, some artists are finger painters. It sounds weird, but there's a painter that creates large format paintings using her fingers strictly. It has a very interesting feel. In that case, obviously, because that's the process, gloves are mandatory. Sometimes I use gloves, sometimes I don't, but I'm always very careful to wash my hand very carefully before I eat or right after I'm done. So inhaling, ingesting is dangerous. Anytime you have to deal with powders, or sprays, that's where you have to be more careful. And what's amazing about Liquitex is that they always try to improve their paints to make it safer and safer and better, obviously. And they came out with a cadmium-free range. So reds, orange, and yellows without cadmium. I compared the two, the cadmium versus none, and the colors are really, really close. Close enough for me to switch safety first. Another cool thing to find on the label is the light fastness of the paint. Light fastness. This means how resistant to UVs to light the paint is. So through the years, if the painting is facing a window, will the colors fade rapidly or be pretty resistant? 
There's a rating, usually it's a number with a little sun. It's usually one for excellent, two for very good, and then other times it could say an R for not rated. I feel like as a whole, acrylic paint, just because of its nature, the plasticky nature of it, holds color really well, but cheaper paints might degrade and fade a lot more than high quality paint. Paying attention to the light fastness is also something to think about. I feel like light resistance is a lot trickier and more finicky with um, watercolors and maybe with inks. Those tend to, because they're thinner and watery, they tend to be a lot more fragile when it comes to UVs. And novelty colors like um, neon, yellows and pinks and those types of colors. On the tube they don't really have a rating for light fastness so I'm assuming that those might fade a lot more than a regular yellow. Just a hunch. Even when buying student quality paint I try to buy good student quality paint as in a reputable or known brand. For example Liquitex Basic. I really like those. They're a lot cheaper and they perform really well and if I look at the label even those student paints have a light fastness rating. This, for, for example, is opaque and excellent. I think it's really worth it compared to the dollar store where you don't really know what's in it. Talking about price, it took me way too long to figure out that every color within the same range isn't the same price. There's like a series, series one, two, three, four, five, and they all have a different price. I guess some pigments are more expensive to create. That's the only explanation. It's something to pay attention to, especially when uh, in art supply stores, they have sales sometimes and they're like, half price, $2 for paint too. But sometimes it's just on series three. Another thing to pay attention to is viscosity. And that's how thick or thin the paint is for Liquitex. It comes in heavy body and soft body. One thing that I didn't know is that soft body and heavy body are as pigmented. I thought I was smart by buying big tubs of heavy body and I was going to get twice as much paint by diluting it. Not the case. I was diluting the pigmentation of my heavy body paint and it didn't give me as much pigment as the soft body paint. Live and learn. If I know I want to paint something more figurative, more realistic or very thin on my canvas, like I don't want any thickness or texture on my canvas, I'll make sure to buy soft body paint. This way I can get flat thin layers that are very opaque and when I want to work in a more expressive way like the impasto technique or like abstract paintings or the impressionist styles like um, Van Gogh, I'd use the heavy body. You can still dilute heavy body paint to get a decent amount of opacity and save a bit of money. There's a way to do it. I made a full video on how to thin out acrylic the right way. There's a few good tips in there, so go watch it. If you haven't hit the bell, take a moment to do it. I would love to have you back. I will see you very soon for another one.